Hi, I'm Bob Rice. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to Zoom, which is a uh, teleconferencing tool which has become very popular nowadays. And it comes in a couple different flavors or formats uh, that might have interest you uh, depending on your hardware. It comes as an app that you can use on your mobile device. It has it's also a website that you can go to to use the web conferencing software. I uh, allow you to have conversations with uh, up to a hundred different people at the same time. Uh, chances are you won't be conferencing with a hundred different people, uh, but it doesn't matter where they are in the world, you can have them on your conference with Zoom, um, and it has some really nice features which I'm going to explain as we go along. So let's get started on this Zooming process, and I'm going to show you a bunch of screens that uh, you'll be familiar with if you get involved with the Zoom meetings. And each of these will hopefully give you a little bit more information on how to use Zoom and what's happening during the middle of the meeting and what some of your options are. Uh, we'll cover some important features in security. We'll uh, show you how to set up a meeting. We'll show you how to join a meeting. And again, this is gonna vary a little bit from device to device. I'm gonna repeat that frequently throughout the presentation here because it's important to understand I'm showing you a particular screen here but your screen may not look exactly like that depending on what device you're using. Each Zoom uh, process, whether it's on a PC, whether it's on a tablet, or whether it's on a phone is going to look slightly different. Keep in mind the functions are going to be basically the same. Okay, so uh, let's get into the details. Uh, Zoom is a web conferencing tool. Um, it allows you to conference with a large number of people, up to 100, like I mentioned before. Um, and you can see the faces on the screen. You can see people and their uh, reactions to uh, uh, some of the jokes that you told or whatever. Um, but the uh, main uh, idea is to allow you to converse uh, and get information uh, back and forth. <clears throat> the uh, Projection of the individuals that are on the screen is uh, somewhat to their selection of whether they want to display their vi <laughs> video or not. Uh, each person who comes into the conference will be given that choice. There's a wide variety of different conferencing tools that you can use that are out there. Zoom is just one of them. Uh, there's WebEx, uh, which has been popular for many, many years in businesses. Uh, a new one coming online strongly is Microsoft Teams. Uh, that is actually designed mainly for the business world. Uh, there's High Five and then there's freeconferencecall.com. Zoom has been marketed quite well uh, in addition uh, the, to the fact that it's uh, free for low level use of the software. Um, and that's one of the, the main attractions of Zoom is not only is it free, but it's also easy to use and, uh, and now in the world of we've, this pandemic, uh, it's, it gives us a way to get together and conference with a large group of different people uh, at one time. Now here's something that's going to get uh, a little bit confusing as we go through uh, trying to explain Zoom. Uh, it's an app. Uh, it's an app on your phone. It's an app on your tablet. There's also a website that you can visit, and here's the challenge uh, for me, is that it looks differently uh, depending on how you access uh, the app or the website. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, a couple different versions of it, but uh, because it'll look different on a tablet than it will on a phone, um, and it'll look different on a PC versus a Mac, uh, I'll cover as much as I can. But just understand if I'm showing a specific uh, screen, yours may not look exactly the same. The function is going to be the same no matter uh, how you do it. And before we get too far, a few words of wisdom. Remember, it's bad luck to be superstitious. So Zoom was created uh, in 2011, so it hasn't been around a long time. An interesting thing, it was created by a guy named Eric Nguyen, uh, who was a Cisco executive. Uh, now that's interesting because Cisco are the people who offered WebEx, uh, which was a very, very popular conferencing tools in the business world. 
then today they still have WebEx and they remain a competitor of Zoom. Uh, Zoom evolved quickly and uh, launched in 2013 and it had a million users by the end of the year. By 2017, uh, that's just <clears throat> three years ago, uh, it had a billion dollar valuation. So Zoom meetings, as we mentioned, are audio and video conferences that allow two or more people to communicate online. Uh, typically it's a group of people, but uh, you can do this with just two of you. And uh, if you want to, the advantage, of course, is, uh, to me, is the uh, video portion of it where you can actually see each other and get uh, that face-to-face -face, uh, reaction. Uh, you can read body language and so forth that you can on a phone call. Uh, <clears throat> some of you may be uh, familiar with FaceTime, um, <clears throat> which is uh, two people talking to each other on a phone or a tablet that you can actually see each other's face. Uh, this takes that to the next step. So it allows a very large group of people, and again, like I mentioned before, up to 100 people uh, to uh, Zoom together. And uh, now you can't see them all on the same screen, and how many people you can see on a screen at a time will depend on which device that you're actually using. Okay, let's start with the uh, website. And uh, if you go to uh, zoom.com, uh, that's pretty easy, Z-O-O-M dot C-O-M. On your computer, you can do this on your laptop. You can do it on a uh, phone. You can do it on a tablet. This is simply uh, going to a specific website. You don't have to load an app or any other information, software, etc. It's going to be a little bit different, so hang on. Uh, we're going to go through all of it, and uh, we're also going to get to the app version, which is different. And I'm going to show you how to access a meeting and how to set up a meeting. When you go to the website, it's going to look like this, as you see here. And if you look up in the upper right-hand corner, uh, there's join a meeting, host a meeting, and sign in. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you've never signed into Zoom before, uh, this is where you're going to uh, set up your account. Again, this is all free. You won't need a credit card or anything like that, um, but you will need some information. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> let's uh, go to the next slide. And let me mention again, as we look at this, uh, the app is going to be much different from a, an appearance standpoint, the function is going to be relatively the same. We're going to start in the upper right hand corner, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, if you want to host a meeting, uh, it's going to give you a choice with video off, with video on, and screen share only. Screen share only shows what's on your computer screen or your phone or your tablet. It does not show your face from the camera. So that's the difference here with as far as video on or screen share only. Video off is simply just a phone call for most intents and purposes. Frequently you'll get an invitation to join a Zoom meeting, uh, which is actually very easy to do, and I will show you how to do that here in just a few minutes. But uh, if you get a uh, invitation, uh, they'll send you a link as you see here in blue, and that link is uh, an active link. If you just click on it, it'll take you to the Zoom meeting. Uh, it will download some software to your tablet or phone or computer to allow you to join the meeting, but it's relatively simple from that point on. Now, if you click on that uh, invitation and it doesn't work, uh, you can simply highlight the everything from HTTPS colon all the way through the end and copy it and put it into your browser and enter it there. It should take you right to the meeting. Now, if, for example, it doesn't, there's another approach where you see here we have a meeting ID and passcode just below that. That is important information because now you can simply go to zoom.com as we saw before and when you enter in you would enter the meeting ID and then it will ask you for a passcode. Now passcode isn't always necessary uh, it's more frequently nowadays it's necessary because we 
add a added level of security. Keep in mind that as you uh, are in a Zoom meeting, anybody that has that information could simply join your meeting uh, <clears throat> without any um, of your knowledge or <clears throat> desire. So that's why a passcode is set up and it allows a level of security. There's other levels of security that we'll talk about here in the future as well. And as I mentioned, if you uh, the link doesn't work, you'll go to the zoom.com website. You'll go to this uh, screen again and uh, you'll enter uh, join a meeting. And this page will show up you know, where you have a choice to sign in or sign up. Again, if you have used Zoom before and you have an account, uh, like everything else, you'll have to remember uh, what password that you entered in to get it started uh, and your email address. Uh, so hopefully you know your email address. If you don't, then uh, that's a different class altogether. And if you have uh, have not signed up, you down below here where it says sign up for free, you'll click that information right there. The next page is asking for some information, and there'll be several pages like this where you'll ask for. So once you've signed up or signed in, you'll come to a page like this. Uh, allows you to schedule a meeting or join a meeting as you can see in the upper right hand corner where those arrows are pointing. Uh, if you're going to schedule a meeting, that's uh, you getting ready to host a meeting. Obviously, it's going to ask you when. Uh, you can do one immediately or schedule one in the future. Uh, over on the upper right hand side, or you see that little blue schedule meeting, you can do that right there. If uh, you look over on the left hand side where it says meetings at the top, that's going to give you a list of all the meetings that you have already scheduled. So keep in mind, if you're not going through the link that you were given, uh, which will usually show up in an email, uh, you're going to actually enter that meeting information. It's going to ask you for the meeting number, uh, as we saw before. You'll enter that, and then it'll ask you for that passcode. You can copy and paste the passcode. That works. Uh, if you're going to host a meeting, you'll have to provide all the meeting information. Here's the screen for scheduling a meeting. Uh, you can give the where it says topic, that's simply a title for your meeting, and description, uh, which again is optional. Uh, the topic is not optional, you have to give it some type of name or it'll just call it my meeting. Uh, description uh, you, doesn't uh, basically help you any, but it does help people that you're sending the meeting to. It'll give them an idea of what the meeting's all about. Uh, you schedule when that meeting is. Um, how long it's going to be. Again, something important here is that uh, with the free version, you're limited to a 40-minute time period. Um, their paid versions, uh, you can go hours for those uh, <coughs> meetings. The uh, time zone that you're in, whether again, down the, the next little block there is very important. You can set up recurring meetings, so you can do this every week, every month, every year. <coughs> Uh, the, uh, you can use a, your own personal ID or just have them generate a uh, meeting uh, in this software. Uh, again, the security, that's where it's automatically set up to use a passcode, or you can uncheck that and not use a passcode. So on this screen, as you continue on down, you'll see your additional options on video, whether you want to have the host shown or the partic participants shown uh, automatically when they come in uh, <clears throat> or not. And the audio, you can actually use a telephone call separately to for the meeting or use the computer audio uh, or both, uh, and depending on how you want to set up the meeting. Uh, on meeting options down below, uh, again, you can allow participants to join any time, which is a little bit on the dangerous side. Uh, from a security standpoint, uh, mute participants upon entry. Uh, that's if you're having an important meeting and you don't want people just to come in and start talking because they don't have any idea what's been said up to that point. Uh, automatically record meeting at the 
on a local computer and if you're I would say that's more for business purposes uh, and then approve or block entry to users from specific regions or countries uh, can be a security uh, plus there if you want to use that feature. As I mentioned, the app is different. It's going to look different. It's going to function very similar. Um, you have to, what, to uh, install the app on your device. Uh, you can install the app on your computer. It'll work just as fine on the computer as it does on your phone or your tablet. Uh, and it's going to look different. Uh, this is important uh, because uh, you don't want to be shocked into uh, a different view on your screen and not understand where to go. Uh -huh. And to make things even more complicated here, it depends on what device you load the app on as to what the screen is going to look like. It's very, very similar between all the different ones, but if you have a PC or an Android or an iPhone, they're all going to be slightly different functions all the same. They're just the little icons that you got on the screen are going to look a little bit different. Typically on an iPhone, this is the screen that you're going to see. You have a choice of a new meeting, join an existing meeting, schedule a meeting, or share a screen. Over on the left hand side, you'll see a home, a chat, your list of your meetings, or comments. Down on the lower left hand side, you can just barely see that, it says settings, a little gear there, and we're going to get into some of those details here in a minute. Here's another screen that uh, may pop up depending on your device. Again, it's very similar, the icons are different, uh, functions about the same. So once again, the upper right hand corner is where it has settings. Now in the middle of the screen you have start with out video, start with video, schedule, and join. Now below is where you have uh, your meetings and contacts and chats. So on uh, this screen, uh, the app, uh, you want to schedule a meeting. You simply press schedule and it will ask you all the same information the website uh, version asks you. So it's going to want to know when the meeting is, what's the title of the meeting, and then it, uh, when that's all done, it'll ask you to invite people. Now, if you haven't fallen asleep yet uh, on this uh, little seminar, uh, I'd say uh, this is a good time to wake up and pay attention. Here's some important stuff that uh, we can walk through and will allow you to master the uh, Zoom meeting software. Uh, this is in your settings. Again, it's relatively simple, but uh, the settings, those little gear in the upper right hand corner or it could be down in the lower left hand corner. And uh, then we're going to get into some of the features there. Again, to point out, the screen may look slightly different. Um, and uh, you're looking for the little gear as the arrow is pointing to right here. It may be somewhere different on your screen, but uh, again, it's going to be a little gear and it's going to get you into your settings. Now, if you're using the app, that's going to be relatively straightforward. It's going to open up and look something like this. Once again, it's going to give you an option of looking at your meetings. It's going to show you your contacts that are in Zoom. Uh, it's going to give you the option to chat with someone. And it's going to have a general category, which we're going to get into and about basically tells you uh, where you're, what version you're working with. And once again, if you're using a laptop, the uh, screen should look something different. Uh, it's going to look something like this. The functions are going to be very similar. Um, again, if you look at uh, the general tab, you got some options there. You can start to zoom when you start Windows. I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Uh, it says when closed, minimize window to the notification area instead of the taskbar. You can understand that. Most of these are self-explanatory. Use dual monitors. Uh, you know, if you're in a business situation, that's common. Uh, enter full screen automatically. Uh, you'll understand that when you start zooming. Uh, <coughs> automatically copy invitation URL once the meeting starts. 
that allows you to invite a bunch of other people uh, as the meeting is going on. Uh, and then ask me to confirm when I'm leaving a meeting. Again, that's just an extra step to get out of a meeting. Uh, show my connected time. That's an interesting feature, especially if you have a 40 minute uh, limitation. Remind me five minutes and you can change that five to some other category uh, number before my upcoming meeting. Uh, stop my video and audio when my display is off or screensaver begins. And then uh, again, uh, just to be a little bit more sensitive, uh, we have reaction skin tone here. You can uh, change what color your uh, thumb shows up on the uh, reaction screen. And we'll show you some of those details in the future. Here. So the next screen right here is going to be very important. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, selections and choices down below here that uh, help you uh, process through a Zoom meeting uh, properly. <clears throat> So uh, one, it shows you which camera uh, you're using. If you have more than one camera, you can uh, change that right there. Uh, now, it's also going to default to a 16 by 9, which is your typical computer screen nowadays. Um, now, if you're using a, uh, a tablet or a uh, phone, that may be a little bit different. You may want to go to the original ratio. Um, now, you, if you have a good graphics card, you can enable high definition. Um, now, for some reason, it, depending on what camera you have and what device you're using, you may want to mirror your video. In my particular case, the camera that I have, I do have to mirror that video to get everything in the right perspective. Uh, touch up my parents, a nice feature there. Kind of uh, gets rid of some blemishes. It's fairly minor touch up but uh, gives you a little bit cleaner look on the screen. Uh, meetings, always display participant names on your, on your video. I don't know why you would not want that, but it's a nice feature. You can see who you're talking to uh, <clears throat> in case you don't recognize them. Uh, turn off my video when joining a meeting. Again, if you're from a security standpoint, when you join a meeting, uh, rather than it just come up and bring your picture up, um, it'll come up and then uh, I'll, allow you to change that uh, as you in, after you're in the meeting. Always show video preload dialog when joining a video meeting. Another feature that then I think by default is already selected. So here's another interesting feature. Again, if you're using a phone or a, a tablet, it's in your hand and you may want to rotate the view 90 degrees so that you're not laying on your side. <laughs> Uh, depending on how that video comes up, it's real easy to change simply by clicking the rotate 90 degrees. And here's a real nice feature that I like, and it's kind of amazing how they do this. Uh, virtual background. Um, you can set this up in the beginning, or you actually change this in the beginning, or in the middle of a meeting if you want. Uh, if you look down below here where it says choose virtual background, um, you can have none, which is what you're normally working with. You can select some of their pre-given uh, locations. You can be on the beach. You can be in San Francisco. Uh, looks like you're in the middle of a forest there uh, or in space. Um, that's the pre-given. Now, um, what this is going to do is rather than looking at the room that you're in, uh, it's going to hide all that background behind you. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how it does it, but I think it works on motion. So as you move, it knows uh, that's the part that you want to keep, and it'll delete everything else behind you uh, and replace it with the scene. Now, if you want a specific scene, all you have to do is go over here where this little plus sign is and select a picture that's on your computer. Once you select that, it'll ask you where that picture is and if you have a picture of yourself in Nairobi or Antarctica um, or it doesn't have to be yourself in the picture uh, just a picture of some place that you've been and you want to display that as your background simply check that uh, start with that plus sign select that picture and it'll actually put that as your background in the uh, video screen for your meeting. Now, once you're in the meeting, 
you'll have this little menu down below. Sometimes this menu is going to show up at the top of your screen, uh, depending on what device you used and whether it's a tablet or you went to the website. Anyway, the selections are basically the same. And what you have to understand is these little arrows next to where it says, see where it says stop video, uh, the little arrow to the right of that um, it will give you the selection to change your virtual background and some other uh, important features that you can do during a meeting. Uh, now, nobody knows what you're doing. Uh, none of this is displayed on your screen to the rest of the participants as you're doing it. So you can experiment and look at all these different features uh, down below here uh, as you're in the meeting. Uh, but pay attention to what's going on in the meeting as well. But uh, in uh, a meeting, you may want to change your, turn your audio off. You may want to stop your video. Uh, you may want to invite more people. This is where you can share your screen. Now, the, the host will have to give you the choice of uh, sharing your screen if you want to do that. Here's a nice tip to remember. It can be very useful as you Zoom meetings. Uh, the, there's a shortcut, and if you're not familiar with a shortcut, it's basically a couple keys that you're going to press, and it's going to make an action in the meeting, and there's several that you can do. One of the most important is this one right here. It's Alt-V, so number V for video. If you hold your Alt button down and press the V, it will turn your video on or off. Again, if you want to be seen or not seen, uh, for you want to go get a cup of coffee or something, you can hit Alt-V and your video will stop. You can go get your coffee, come back and hit Alt-V again, and now you're back on the screen. Uh, on uh, the uh, Mac version, it's a little bit different. They have different commands, and you can see what the options are there. So the software in general is pretty smart. Uh, what it's going to do when it first starts is it's going to bring up the screen of whoever's talking. So if you use that default right there, you'll be on the screen. You won't see the, everybody there. You'll simply see this person that's talking. Now, if you want to watch everybody during the meeting, simply the upper right hand corner, gallery view, click that and you'll see the vast majority of the people that are there, depending on how many people are in a meeting. Sometimes if it's, it's depending on the device you're on, in, uh, there's an arrow to the right or the left to show additional people. And you can click that and see the other people that are in there. Uh, again, this is going to be depending on what device you have, how many people you can see on the screen at a time. So if you are the person who started the meeting, created the meeting, that makes you the host. Now as a host, you're responsible for the security of the Zoom meeting and how that happens. You will have several options. As you can see down here in the lower left-hand corner, it says security. You can enable a waiting room, which means when people come to join the meeting, they don't just come in and or they're there, they come in and they notify you that, hey, I'm waiting to join your meeting, and then you have to give them permission. What they'll see on their screen is a white screen with a little circle, and it will say, waiting for, hey, host, to let you in the meeting. There's some other important features that I'd suggest you get familiar with. As a host of the meeting, again, you're responsible for that security. So if you're using a laptop or a desktop computer, some of these features are a little bit easier to use. But the chat function allows you to chat back and forth to specific people in the meeting. Uh, just uh, a separate conversation, if you would. Uh, that's not privy to the rest of the people in the meeting. Uh, several other important functions in the what they call a control panel, uh, which is that little menu at the bottom of your screen. And uh, to avoid some confusion, sometimes that will be at the top of your screen, depending on what device uh, you're using. 
anyway, the uh, ver <coughs> options there, of course, mute your audio. Again, the little arrow next to that gives you some other options. Same thing on video. You can invite uh, additional people to the meeting. Uh, and this is in the middle of the meeting. You can just uh, send a quick invite to somebody. Manage participants if you're the host. Uh, you can drop people in and out uh, there. You can share your screen or you can allow other people to share their screen in the meeting. Uh, you can, again, as we just mentioned, you can chat. Uh, and then another nice feature is if you want to remember specific things that are being said in a, a meeting, you can record a meeting. Um, you press the little record button and then, of course, you're going to have to worry about memory in your device or whatever depending on what you're using, especially if it's a phone. Uh, reactions, uh, if you click that button, it's going to give you several different reactions uh, that you can pop up on your screen. They stay there momentarily and then they'll disappear. Uh, and then if you want to end the meeting or leave the meeting, it's right hand side. And whether you're a host or you're just a participant, uh, you can leave and or end the meeting. And to mention, because uh, uh, Zoom works differently on different devices, that little control panel may look differently. You may have an option at the right-hand side where it says More, and that's where you'll enter uh, the <coughs> options for chat, invite, record, and so forth. Uh, it's just the same functions, just a different format. So here's a list of tips and tricks for Zoom meetings. Again, these are some short uh, shortcuts uh, that allows you to do different functions uh, in the middle of a meeting. Uh, again, uh, mute or unmute your audio, Alt-A. Mute the entire group at once is Alt-M. That only works if you're the host. Start or stop video, Alt-D, as we mentioned before. Uh, pause or resume screen sharing, Alt-T. Uh, start recording a meeting, Alt-R. Uh, pause or resume screen recording, Alt-P. Switch cameras, Alt-N. Again, that's only going to be possible if you have more than one camera. Raise or lower your hand, uh, Alt-Y. That's kind of handy if you, you want to say something in the middle of the meeting. Hit Alt-Y. It'll raise a hand and hopefully the host will see that. Uh, open the invite window is Alt-I. Um, and uh, to mention, this is for uh, PC users only. So if you're a Mac user, here's the commands that you would use for all those functions that we just mentioned. Again, this has no pertinence at all to someone who is on a PC or Android device. So I want to thank you for uh, listening to me uh, drone on about Zoom meetings and hopefully you've got some useful information here. Uh, it's a great tool. You'll find it uh, very useful for a lot of different things, whether you're it's with your family, uh, business, or uh, church groups. Uh, we've seen it in our church in many, many uh, instances become extremely valuable tool uh, for specific meetings. Uh, whether it's uh, for a, a business purpose or whether it's just uh, for enjoyment. Um, I hope you'll uh, take the effort to uh, join some Zoom meetings and maybe even set some up for yourself. Uh, if you want some additional tips and tricks, there's a website, uh, digitaltrends.com. If you go there, just search for Zoom tips. Now, that's an interesting uh, website all by itself because it covers more than just Zoom. Uh, if you get a chance, you might want to uh, visit that. Again, it's www.digitaltrends.com. And again, I want to thank you all for listening to me for the last uh, approximately half hour. And uh, hopefully I'll uh, see you again in the future.